You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Gene. Johnson. After Buzz TV. Buzz Studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and Bing.com, and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV's The Bridge After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show, it's AfterBuzz TV's The Bridge After Show. <laughs> Very creepy, as always. Bing is for doing it, and we are back doing another episode of The Bridge After Show here at After Buzz TV. It is season one, episode five, entitled The Beast, which this actually sounds like a beast is like coming, it does doesn't sound it? Like sounds a beast. pretty creepy. <laughs> <laughs> but I am one of your hosts, Paige Selvin. Unfortunately, Dave Klein and Catherine both couldn't be here this evening, but I am joined by a lovely co host. Please introduce yourself. Hello, everyone. I am Tiana Hobson. Yes, and we had fun watching this episode i wouldn't call it fun because it's always kind of <laughs> sad i mean we enjoy the show but it's you know intense this is was was an intense, intense episode but we're gonna jump right into it i you haven't been here but on our after shows i am very very upset about the uh adultery that occurred with oh. marco and charlotte and alma and so that's why i want this to be a jumping off point because I didn't expect it to come out this soon. It's only episode five. I kind of thought, you know, when somebody cheats, it drags on through it a does. season. And this time it didn't. So she came right out. And she's <laughs> like, you slept with her. Like, like this has happened before. Yeah. Um, it sounds like it's happened before. And I was very proud of her for kicking him out. Me too. And it's just sad. Even she's pregnant. Yeah. She's got two little girls. She has his stepson, which I'm very happy that she's letting him stay there. Mm-hmm. Um, but this whole story kind of let us learn a little bit more about Marco because from the get-go we thought he's a great guy we thought he didn't have any flaws then he cheats and then we learn from his son that maybe he's a little bit more selfish than we originally thought yeah and um his wife Alma she's she's the actual good person here because you know like you said she is letting um his step or her stepson stay Mm -hmm. she seems like she is she's got her stuff together Mm -hmm. and I like that in her and she I just love that she kicked him out because a lot of women in shows, you know, they know about it and they don't say anything. Mm -hmm. One, they keep it as their kind of secret. Like, I know what you're doing and I'll find a way to get back at you. Right. But she just let it out there. She did. And she was so quick to just be like, you you slept with her, get out. And he, the thing is, he doesn't admit it. You know, he's never Mm -hmm. like, I did, but just his face and he doesn't deny it. And then he's like, well, you're, you're having a baby. She's like, I don't care. Get out. And he doesn't even fight. Like he just leaves. And it, it makes you think, okay, so what, what, what is this marriage like? Because half an hour before in your kitchen, you were kissing her on the cheek and like making her giggle. And now it's, is it just a front you put up Mm -hmm. or do you guys just play happy and it's not happy? I don't know. It was very confusing to me, but it's. I'm glad it's out in the open and everybody knows about it. And it, she even opened up to um, her coworker, Kenneth, is Kenneth, his name. So yeah. we met him last episode briefly. He mm-hmm. like had a line or something. He like something about Gus or Goose. I don't know how you. <laughs> maybe I'm just. I think the gringo way to say it is Gus. Gus. That's how I would, <laughs> that's how I would say it. So Gus. Um, yeah. So they talked about Gus last episode, and then he popped back in, and I feel like he's kind of going to be a player because. It, not a player, but like a player in the show because we've seen him twice now and he's kind of in emotional moments. You know, she was about to tell him kind of what's going on in her relationship. Mm-hmm. So I feel like Gus has a dark past too. Yeah, he's, I think he's so. He's got some demons inside him, mostly from the relationship he has with his father. Right, because and, he said he's yeah. selfish, doesn't care about anybody. Yeah, you could just see some anger back there. So I really hope that they get more into that Mm -hmm. and what's going on they addressed it i think maybe it was the first episode and they said uh well gus was getting in trouble or or gus doesn't want to come out of his room and something like that and it it almost seemed like he was a troubled child Mm -hmm. but it's almost now i mean he lives in a dangerous city he goes in juarez and here's my question and if any of you viewers know please leave comments and let us know um we asked this last week they're crossing the bridge to go to work and i've never heard of that Like, they're working in America and then crossing the bridge back to Mexico. Mm -hmm. That's what's confusing to me. I didn't know that you could just do that. But maybe it's a working visa. A working visa? But I didn't know a working visa meant you came back and forth. I thought it was, like, you go there and you work and you stay there and you live there. 
that's what I thought it meant too. But but, but you maybe see people go that close to the border. It's like it's kind of like an exception to the an rule. Exception. I'm not sure because also the reporter does that as well. Um, Daniel Fry's partner, she does it as well. So I'm I don't really know, and it just seems to me. I thought getting back across the Mexican border was supposed to be hard. <laughs> Apparently not. Yeah. At least this show makes it seem easy peasy because people were just yes. going back and forth all day. Yeah, that, that pathway, you just walk back and forth yeah. and you're fine. No passport, no ID, nothing. You could be a 12-year-old girl going back yeah. and forth. And then that barbed wire fence, I mean, yeah, I don't easy. know. It was very strange. But getting a look into their personal lives is one of my favorite parts of the show, but this show is much more. And now the – stories are very intertwined and so much is happening and so Fausto we see him mm-hmm. and they're talking about everything we saw him last episode saying we can't have the gringos knowing about all these murders and we can't be a part of this and we can't raise attention in, in the U.S. and so they go to the U.S. they you know they get Marco and now we see him in a basement saying he's not a serial killer because he doesn't <laughs> enjoy it yet he kills somebody after torturing them but he didn't enjoy it he didn't enjoy it he is He's more of a gangster than a serial killer, I guess. It's almost as if, you know, yeah, I feel like the gangster mentality is like, if you, an eye for an eye, if you Mm -hmm. do this, then I have to kill you. It's not an option. They're doing it to survive, Mm -hmm. almost, as opposed to serial killers who plot out, you know, I mean, clearly this killer that we have going on right now, he's planned this for a while because, you know, he's like an obsession. Yeah, it's it's an obsession for them, whereas the... um, For um, Fosto, it's more of a spur of the moment, like, oh, we got this guy, so now, you know, let's torture him, get the information we need, and he's disposable after that. You don't really need him. Poor guy. If he didn't have such a crazy cousin who's chasing down his ex-girlfriend or current girlfriend who Linder (laughs) stole, and so I still don't get Linder. I don't, I I feel like somewhat similar to Sonia, he has something going on. Mm Um, maybe not Asperger's, maybe not autism, but it's, it, he comes off very strange. Like he doesn't read normal social cues and even the way he talks is kind of just like, hi, okay, all right. But <laughs> like he just murdered somebody and he's like, okay. He doesn't even care there's a cop outside his door. Yeah. He's he's a strange guy. He is a strange guy, but I kind of like him. Because he's helping people. Yeah, he's helping people and he's, you know, at least the guy he killed was a bad guy. I wish, though, you know, to clean it up in a nice little bow, he would have opened the door and been like, this guy just attacked me. And I, I tried. I, he didn't even kill him at that point. Yeah, he was he still, was still alive. alive. So he could have arrested him and he could have gone off. And then he kills him. At that point, it was still self-defense. Yeah, it was. So, yeah, until he came back. With the iron. The hot yeah, iron. The hot iron. Ugh. We were sitting there watching. We're like, oh. <laughs> uh, 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 Cringe your no, face. No. It was, it was pretty brutal. But so Fausto now is asking, gets Linder's name from mm-hmm. um, Valdez's cousin. But he's not looking for Winder per se. He's looking for Valdez, but he knows that's the connection. And I want to know why he's so involved in this. I mean, it's one guy who's kind of gone off the rails over his ex-girlfriend. He killed one person. He's probably going to kill two. But why are you so determined to find him? That's a good and question. And what are you going to do? And he says this episode, he finds, you know, Linder burying his body, and he says, that's mine. And I think he's just talking about the body. I don't think he even cares that Linder killed him. Yeah. I don't think he cared at all about you know, just a disposable person, part of the war, I yeah. guess you could call it. And I don't know. It's weird, though. It's like, what are you, what are you going to get from getting this dead body? Yeah. Or they, what, what were they going to get from finding it? They were just going to kill him themselves, right? Yeah, because, I mean, just because, the, um, you know, Valdez is looking for Linder doesn't mean that Linder knows where... Valdez is. Valdez is. No, so exactly. You should have been running surveillance on Linder... Just mm-hmm. to see if you could find Valdez somewhere running surveillance on him, too. Exactly. It was a strange, it was definitely a strange uh, string of events. Um, but the one thing I'm glad about is that Ava is now safe from her ex boyfriend. Um, but a question that arises now is Does Fosto know why Valdez was there? Does Fosto have a connection to Ava? Is he going to go after her? I mm-hmm. mean, was it his daughter? Like, I don't know. I don't know who she is. I don't know. We don't know much about her, just as we don't know much about Maria. And so this whole. It's hard because these the Mexican people in this show, um, most of them are victims. We don't know anything about them. And so it's hard to kind of piece together where they fit in the story when we don't know who they are. But I have a feeling they're all intertwined. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I, I feel that way too. Yeah. And hopefully it'll probably be, probably be like the season finale when all these – it's like, oh, my gosh, the connections. The connection. Well, that's how it's been going so far. I mean, things that you didn't pick up on, you're like, oh, okay. And, <laughs> and they're all piecing themselves together. But also, one thing I have to point out, I don't know if you viewers at home thought it was weird, but Linder really struggled with that body. <laughs> and then he saran-wrapped his head. 
and he wrapped him in a rug and threw him out a window. It's like there had to be an easier way to do it. I wanted to get him those furniture moving pads that you slide (laughs) under the dresser because I thought it would be easier to To drag the the body. Yeah. Yeah. Just, I mean, just put those underneath the head and everything. Maybe he wouldn't have struggled so much with that body. I mean, he obviously must be kind of a good guy because it seems like his first murder because he's not doing so well. I mean, he's just dragging this body and he's just leaving blood everywhere and he's like, he just drips water on it. I'm like, that doesn't clean up blood. That just dilutes it a little bit and it's still everywhere. But I I wonder if he was, I was saying to you when we were watching, I wonder if he buried him on the Mexican side Mm -hmm. or the U.S. side because, I mean, if you bury him on in the Mexican border, I mean, they're not going to really investigate yeah. further. They're probably going to think cartel, drugs. Mm-hmm. They're not going to be like, oh, Stephen Linder in El Paso must have murdered this guy. Yeah, but how did Fausto know that he was out there? That's what, I don't know. They, but his his big henchman, well, he was like, find Linder. Yeah. And he found Linder. So I don't know if they, I mean, they couldn't have been following him because the way they sped up was like mm-hmm. crazy. So unless they, like, tapped him, like, tapped his phone or, like, GPSed him, I don't get it. Or maybe they had a tap or something on their guy's phone. Uh, Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It was very strange. It was really strange how they showed up out of nowhere Mm -hmm. because he's in the middle of nowhere by himself. And then all Mm -hmm. of a sudden this truck comes up and... Flying. Yeah. I thought thought he was going to run him over. Yeah, I thought they were going to run him over, too. But I thought he was going to duck in the ditch and just... I don't know, but this that's the thing with the bridge. It's like there's so many unanswered questions, even the little ones. It's like, how did they know where he was? But, yeah, so that kind of wrapped up Blender. It was kind of a weird side story this time. It didn't really have much crossover with the murder or anything. Mm-hmm. It was kind of just Fosto is becoming more involved in this show. And also a fun bit, I was talking to um, somebody who is – works as his agent, I think, the guy who plays Fosto. Oh, okay. And he was saying that it would turn out to – or not Fosto um, – Maybe it was Fausto. I think it was Fausto, but it was like it wasn't meant to be such a huge role at first. But oh. he like hit it off. I think that's what it was. I'll double check and I'll, I'll comment I love it on when our that thing. That happens. Yeah, when your role's not supposed to be anything, and then yeah, and then it just you blows just kind of knock it out the park, and the audience loves you. So yeah, and I think that's the thing with this show though is there's so many uh, Mexican actors and Latino actors in this because it's the Mexican border mm-hmm. that a lot of us aren't familiar with. I mean, because there hasn't been a show like this before. And so it's nice because we're seeing, I don't even know if they're, you know, actors who have been mainly in America or if they've been working, you know, yeah. um, in South America. I don't know. So, I mean, it's nice to see kind of that crossover. But, um, yeah, so, well, I'll let you guys know about that guy, though. I'll talk to his, his yeah. agent and see what he was saying because it was kind of cool. He was, like, telling me all these details. So I'll, I want to find out more about the bridge. But um, moving on to the actual murder, there was no murder I guess we still have just the original murder, yeah. which is the weird thing because they're still looking for the killer. They keep saying, oh, the killer, the murder. And it's like we're still talking about the murder that happened on the bridge and not, you know, what happened to Maria or what's been going on. Mm-hmm. Like since the very first episode, I mean, it's been going on. Um, one thing I did learn, though, um, through reading a little bit about the show is that this murder is going to wrap up before the end of the season. So this is oh. not going to be the end of the season. This is not going to be one of those shows – That, you know, they have a bad guy every season. It's Mm -hmm. not going to be, we'll find out the killer in the season finale. We're probably going to find out about the killer much sooner than that. And so it's kind of weird because you feel like watching it right now that this is going to be a long, drawn out process. I wonder how they're going to do that. I wonder if we'll find out who, you know, like maybe Sonia finds out who the killer is. She figures it out, but then he's still on the run. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how they're going to do it. And even, I guess they were saying that they didn't even know the path they were going to take when they were, you know, when they were starting <laughs> this, that, you know, it kind of took its own path and they're kind of doing something different because I feel like every show that's kind of like this, something like a, a Sons of Anarchy or mm-hmm. um, a Dexter, a Dexter or uh, Breaking Bad, I mean, they always have like one bad guy for a whole season and then that that blows up and it's you know the season finale and then you come back and there's a new dilemma and a Mm -hmm. new bad guy but apparently the bridge isn't going to be like that which is interesting and it'll keep us on our toes i'm guessing yeah um but so this week nothing really new is developing other than that we have maria in custody or maybe not custody she's in the hospital hospital. she's recovering she's a little dehydrated she may have been technically in custody because she was crossing the border yeah but Nice of Marco. He convinces her to say she's not going to talk unless she gets asylum. And then she doesn't even really have much to say. (laughs) I was waiting for Sonia to get mad about how little she had to say. But I guess once she dropped that um, hint about the car being like a police car, that was kind of a good stepping stone. Mm -hmm. But before that, I was like, oh, 
Sonia's gonna be so mad that you know they gave her asylum for this. I thought so too, but then I think about Sonia and she doesn't really get like mad. Yeah, you know, she just kind of would have been like walked out. She'd have been like, she has nothing. <laughs> like, I waited a whole day for that. Yeah, exactly. She's. It's funny because each episode I like her more and more. At first I was very, you know, I wasn't into her. I was like, oh, she's rude. She has no empathy for anybody else. And now that we know more about her character and kind of what she's been through um, and just her traits in general, mm-hmm. I, I like her and she's funny. Like the stuff she says are so funny. She's really funny. Like she doesn't even realize that putting Marco's <laughs> wallet on his kitchen table at dinner is like a no-no. Yeah. He's like, you just threw me under the bus. Like, you just basically said I slept with somebody else <laughs> at dinner and acted like nothing happened. She's like, oh, you had sex with her? Oh, okay. And then, like, when he meets Charlotte later, she's like, so you had sex? And she's just so, like, blunt and open. And I don't know. She's hysterical to me. She's, she's really funny. And then, you know, later on when he's sleeping on her couch, that mm-hmm. was a good moment to see her you know, a little bit vulnerable and Yeah, we predicted emotional. that last week that we would learn more about her slowly but surely. Um, and I'm assuming, oh, his name, uh, Jim Dobbs. Was that his name, Jim Dobbs? Oh, Dobbs, yeah. Dobbs, yep, Jim Dobbs. So he's brain damaged. He's the one who killed her sister. And so last episode or the episode before, she said, I went to, his, to where he was, but I couldn't go in. And so I don't know if she was visiting Jim Dobbs or she was visiting someone else, but um, I think – we're going to learn more about that. And I think yeah. we're going to see maybe more into that murder and kind of what went down. Because she also said uh, she was all alone when she died. And that's and then she didn't want Maria to die all alone. Mm-hmm. And so she was connecting her sister's death. Um, but I'm surprised it was so far away. Because last episode when they were talking about it, it seemed like it happened like recently. And apparently it happened when she was 15. 15. So this is obviously something that's really stuck with her. Mm-hmm. I'm sure it's one of those tales of, you know... Uh, she maybe experienced she, a murder. Now she wants to be a detective to solve yeah. murders. And maybe, you know, because he was brain damaged, she didn't really, she didn't get the full justice that she felt like her sister should get because they probably used that in their defense. Right. And so he's probably not in jail. He's mm-hmm. probably, you know, in an asylum somewhere or something like that. And also, I think it's very strange. She has that picture in her fridge that he drew. Yeah. I I was, I want to know more about that because. I, I do too. Um, I've heard of people, you know, maybe she's looking for something. Like an answer it, or an like answer. reasons or... Maybe it's there to fuel her fire every day at work to catch the bad guys. Because at first I thought, because they've showed that picture before, I thought, oh, it must be of when they were kids, like one of them drew it or something. Because it looks like two two girls. So I don't know if one is supposed to be Sonia and her sister was the redhead. I don't I don't mm-hmm. know. Um, so did was he somebody in their lives? I mean, yeah. but she made it sound like no because it was at a truck stop that it all went down. Yeah, maybe she was supposed to be there with her sister. I don't know. I mean, it's very. It was a very strange thing. Um, I find it so strange in this show, though, how forward everybody is. You know. So what happened to your sister? Was it a violent murder? You must miss her. <laughs> it's like lay off. I'm, going, I'm trying to go to bed yeah. in my house. <laughs> I already said good night. Yeah, she did. She said she, good night. She's letting you sleep on her couch. <laughs> like get over it. Yeah. Like stop asking so many questions. But I mean, they're cops, so yeah. Questioning is their second they're like, nature. They're like journalists, just like <laughs> Daniel Fry, who. We didn't see much of him, but I find him very funny. And funny also is a word I used to describe serial buddies. So I think you guys should all go check that out. It is on iTunes. A lot of hard work was put into it by a bunch of people here at AfterBuzz. Kevin, Maria, Phil, all the AfterBuzzers, you know, really, it's, it's a piece of their heart that they put into it. So make sure you go check it out. And it's really, really funny. And I, I mean, I laughed, so. I laughed my butt off. Yeah, I laughed my butt off. Well, maybe not my butt off. I didn't have a butt <laughs> to begin with, so. <laughs> but you should definitely go check it out. And um, because this show is not very funny, so if you need your laughs, <laughs> you can watch this and then get it somewhere else. But um, That's about happy killers. <laughs> yeah, happy killers. I know, serial killers. I mean, oh, serial yeah, buddies, serial killers. If you're into killers. serial, you get the serious with the bridge and the funny with yeah. serial buddies. It's an addiction, apparently. But this guy's proven a point on the bridge, <laughs> I think. But I still can't figure it out very much. But going back into the murder a little bit, again, we didn't see much of Daniel Fry other than to steal his phone. Yeah. And Sonia also asks him about drugs. It's like, girl, <laughs> you do a lot of drugs, huh? Okay. All right. Why? <laughs> why? He's yeah. like, why would I tell you that? And she's just so weird. But uh, Marco steals his phone, and then Sonia... Uh, doesn't realize he stole the phone, and then she comes to the conclusion on her own. Um, but she gets a call from the serial killer. But So he calls Daniel, hangs up, and then calls her work phone. So he must 
have known Sonia is the one working on the case and like yeah I mean she said her name I feel like he's a little OCD like most serial killers turn out to be because he's so meticulous about everything Mm -hmm. so as soon as he heard the name he's like oh okay well he clearly knows everyone working on the case so maybe he didn't want to talk to her on Fry's phone because it's Fry's phone Mm -hmm. so he had to talk to her on her phone yeah maybe maybe. it's like an OCD thing oh I didn't even think about that might be it because why wouldn't you have just had that conversation on Danielle's phone it didn't make sense. And to... she even said, though, you don't like surprises. Mm-hmm. And, like, he, he has everything so calculated. I mean, even with Gedman, so he, we found out he's been visiting Christina. He was visiting Christina every single week. And um, when she's talking to the serial killer, he says, I'm not I'm nobody special. There's more people who have access to this information. He's like, I'm just the one kind of utilizing it. Yeah. Like, people know about this, his institution. So now it's kind of coming out that the FBI is a little shady. And knew about this, and they sent him to even to a therapist, I guess, to try and get him help. Mm-hmm. Uh, didn't work out in the long run because he got his <laughs> head chopped off. So, but it's like you knew that the um, FBI was being shady about something because they wouldn't share the files. Mm-hmm. Spent the whole episode trying to get in there with the files, mm-hmm. and you know what? What is so special about it that you know? they wouldn't let her in there to see right and they're like it's one of our own it's like exactly when it's one of your own that's why you're supposed to be you're supposed to be unbiased Mm -hmm. when you're a detective so um the fbi definitely should have handed it over either to another unit or just to el paso pd because they're too close they liked gedman gedman's their friend their daddy's dead they don't want anything bad about him getting out Mm -hmm. in general because it tarnishes the fbi's (laughs) image anyways to be like oh he was sleeping with 14 year old prostitutes in mexico way to go buddy way to go fbi man (laughs) I don't even know, but so Sonia is kind of piecing things together, but this kind of connected with me a little bit because now, you know, Maria's saying that she thinks she was in something like a cop car, Mm -hmm. and now we're saying that Gedman's in the FBI, and so now it's kind of seeming like it's an inside job, and is it an inside job? Is it not an inside job? Is it someone who is an ex-officer or federal agent? I mean, I have a prediction of who it is, but I'm not going to drop that bomb just yet. I'll wait till predictions. But but I, it's just weird to me because it could be anybody. It could mm-hmm. be an FBI person, yeah, or like El Paso PD. or It even could even be somebody that Marco used to work with, you know, in Mexico. So mm-hmm. I don't know. But it's definitely getting very twisted, and it's all weird, and I don't know who's who and what's what going on in this. Yeah, I don't, exactly. I, I have absolutely no idea. <laughs> and then – also happening at the station, a lot of this stems from the station. Um, everything with Charlotte and with the murder, mm-hmm. everything's going on there. Um, we also meet Gina, who I'm assuming she's around 16. That's maybe what 16. I was putting to. Supposedly she was shoplifting and she she gets picked up by her dad and she says I wasn't shoplifting, I was trying them on and I forgot, and which is good Lindsay one. Lohan used that yeah. same yeah. excuse. Yeah, oh yeah, with her necklace. <laughs> maybe you can host Chelsea lately sometime <laughs> soon because that's what Lindsay Lohan's doing. But yeah, so she's so. But her dad seems just not to care. Oh, mm-hmm. where's your mom been? She's like she's been gone for days. Okay, well you're okay. Like, I have a meeting in 20 minutes, so I can't yeah. really drop you off. But like, why do these people have kids? And he obviously had her a long time ago. I mean, yeah. she's 16-ish, so I don't get it. But so her first instinct is to not walk home, but to walk to Mexico. Which we talked about this too. While I- she was walking into Mexico, as everyone was trying to get out of Mexico. I was like, she doesn't have a purse or anything with her. Nothing. Like, what are you doing going to Mexico by yourself? At, like, 16 years at old. At 16 years old. Even at 30 years old. Don't go in there by yourself. <laughs> Unless you're like, taking a plane to Cabo. Like, you probably shouldn't be doing exactly. anything Exactly. There's in a lot of dangerous things happening. Especially in Juarez, which yes, is where she's going. Exactly. And maybe she's just young and naive, and she hasn't read all the stories about what's been happening to all the girls in Mexico or even the drug wars or anything. Mm-hmm. But so she gets there. She's walking around. And some guy invites her into his home, and she goes. Come on, people. This is just like last week when I said don't follow the noise. (laughs) Don't follow the noise, and don't go into random guys' houses. Who offer you a beer. Right. It's like, so so he obviously knows she doesn't speak Spanish. Mm -hmm. And so his sister seems, I'm assuming Esme is his sister. We don't know per se, but she seems like it's his sister. And she say, you know, she's asking who she is and why she's there. And apparently the brother's going to try and, you know, kidnap her and, Take her parents' money because she's a rich white girl. 
Which she was. Yeah. But we didn't was. know that. She didn't look, she wasn't dressed like one. No. So, I mean, I feel like that's a stereotype or something that all white girls are rich. Yeah. Um, I agree because she was not, it's not like she was dressed head to toe she and had like. She a hoodie and some jeans. Yeah. And she was crying. She like didn't look that great. Yeah. I mean, he must have just assumed like she's from America. She has more so, money than we do. Exactly. So maybe if that she is rich. Then, oh, well, we'll just add her to the graves of all the other Exactly. Girls. But so luckily, this guy's sister has some balls and she like <laughs> sneaks her out of the house and runs away with her. I'm also worried for her. I'm I don't for want her, her to go home because like if her brother's that crazy and he's going to like. I kind of wanted her people. to come across the border and ask for asylum. I know. <laughs> I was like, everyone gets asylum if you help out. Everyone. Just, everyone, come on, get be yeah. safe because how can you go back home now when. He knows you snuck her out, and he was about to make some money off of her. I know. I don't know. And he probably looked stupid with his friend who he called. Yeah, and because, so we have a, I have a yeah, white girl. Yeah, I have a white girl. Bring the car, the big car. Maybe it's one of those things like families, you know, blood's thicker than water. I mean, like, maybe that's how they think their family. Maybe, maybe. she feels like he's not going to do anything to her. But this is where we kind of find it out about The Beast, which is the title of this episode, which we haven't heard before. Mm-hmm. Um so she takes her on a walk, and she shows her these crosses of eight girls who were found. And so she just says – she doesn't know who's responsible for all the dead girls, but there's just dead girls everywhere, like hundreds a year, you know, mm-hmm. piling up. Um, and Christina was one of them, and Maria probably would have been one of them. And so she says – at one point she even says, like, my sister was one of them. I guess mm-hmm. her sister just appeared, and I'm wondering if that's going to come into play. But she says they call him the Beast, and they don't know if it's one guy or two guys or a hundred guys. All they know is that, you know, he's the Beast. And so she tells her to get out of there so that she won't be a pink cross. So Gina leaves and, again, gets back across the border with no passport, no ID, nothing. I mean, is it really that easy? <laughs> Apparently. I mean, come on. Um, over in Texas, it's that easy. Yeah. Try she's... getting down in San Diego and Sonata. It's, it's so, a little harder than that. Not so easy. Yeah. Seriously. I mean, she just walked back home. And so I wonder how close she lives to the border because she walked everywhere. Mm-hmm. So she must live very close to the border. But so she gets home, and the minute she gets in her door, we both were like, oh, no, something's going to happen to her. <laughs> like, what's going to happen to her? And something does happen to her because Marco and um, Sonia end up at the station, and they they immediately have to leave. And so they go to the house, and there's a police car in the driveway, but they didn't call anybody else, any other units. They go inside, and they can't find anybody, and they find a guy, and they tell him to raise his hands up. Turns out it's her father that we saw earlier in the episode. He's been... Stabbed in the neck with something. There was something there was sticking something out of it. Neck. I couldn't look we long couldn't, enough yeah. to. It was disgusting. Yeah. We were both like, "What was that?" I don't know. I don't know. We couldn't look. It kind of looked like a tongue. It looked. We- yeah, it looked. I don't something. know. It was. Ugh. But then there was a lot of blood in his crotch area. So did they cut off his? I don't know. Oh my god! It- I hope not. I don't know. I I'm not saying that's what it was. I'm just saying that there was a lot of blood in a lot of right. places. And then they heard her crying. So they find Gina in the closet and she's saying, I saw the beast. I saw the beast. First up, how do you know it's the beast? <laughs> Second, why is the beast so infatuated with you? The little white girl who just mm-hmm. ran across the border, you know, and escaped being kidnapped. Why would he come to your home and kill your father? I feel like I think okay, I could be wrong on this. But before they left the station, they were talking about how um Gedman had seen a doctor and they got his name mm-hmm. and then they were like let's go Do you think that was the, I think was that the doctor, the doctor was, the was her dad that's and that's point. why he's dead he's dead now because the killer you know is you know he wanted to expose Certain Gedman people. and now he's exposing you know the the cover-up because the mm-hmm. co- the doctor knew because he went to therapy for it yeah that, that, would, that would probably make a lot of sense. <laughs> I don't know. I'm sure we'll learn next episode once we learn his name. Because his name was Peter. Peter. I, I don't remember what they said the doctor's name was because I was too concerned with, like, what was going yeah, on. Yeah, I didn't hear the doctor's name. That's why. Yeah. But, you know, they heard doctor and, no, they didn't make a fake name in the file. This is him. And then yeah, they yeah, took yeah. off. Yeah. And so, first off, who's the police car in the driveway? Yeah. Second... Gina says she sees him. So uh, next episode, um, we're gonna we saw in the previous two. We're gonna learn more about whoever this the beast mm-hmm. is, and I want to know his motives and why he was there and all of that. Um, so that's something we'll learn. Uh, and I think Gina is gonna play a big part now in the show, uh, because you know he's targeting specific people, rich men in Texas, political people in Texas, judges in Texas. So it's you know he's definitely got an agenda. And so the last person that. We're going to focus on, uh, just for this after show, real quickly, is Charlotte Millwright. So she played a little role in this episode, um, but she tells Marco about 
the people coming across her mm-hmm. her land, which was, uh, you know, you don't tell cops about that. And, but, you know, he told her to take the long view and that Graciela won't be around forever, you know, because the way the cartel is, I mean, somebody's going to die at some point. I yeah. mean, it doesn't last forever. And then he tells her he's also going to do the same, which I'm assuming means he's no longer going to be involved with her. But now she's calling some random guy, and yeah. I'm wondering who he's going to be. I don't know who he's going to be, but I I liked their conversation at the diner. When he said, I'm taking the long view, I took that as, Biatch, stop calling me at work. <laughs> <laughs> because you're very obvious that we had an affair. Now the whole office knows. Everybody knows. Kitty yeah. was even like, I've seen things like this before. Yeah. You know, it's just like. It's like, you're a little obsessed with me now. Stop calling. I get I get. she's nervous because of what Graciela did, but Marco can't do anything about that. Nobody can do th- anything about that. Mm-hmm. Your husband got you in that position, so got to live with it. I mean, I was like, you should too. just sell the ranch, but I'm sure Graciela would find her. Yes, but this new mystery man who showed up in a cab. He's creepy, huh? He's kind of creepy. He's like, I'll show you my tattoos. But I will give him a shout-out because I don't actually know his name, but he's on Cougar Town. It's oh. Bobby Cobb right there, ah. and I loved seeing him on this because he says he's from. He was living in Tampa here, and Cougar Town takes place in Florida. Ah, so. funny. Yeah, he's well. I think he must be from our old life because mm-hmm. you know she got married. Um, her husband met her in Orlando or something. I forget what she always says. And you know they called her him a cradle robber and her you know a gold digger. And so that must have been from her past life. Uh, so I think she's using him as a distraction from everything that's going on in her life, but. She's already so involved in everything that's happening mm-hmm. that maybe he's going to die. Maybe, maybe, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I would bring in new people to get mis- mixed into my crazy life. Right? I mean, it's just not fair to anybody. Like it's, yeah, it's not fair because you're already, you've already been placed in this situation and you didn't want to be. And now you're bringing someone else into it, too. Exactly. I know that Marco told her to, you know, live her life. But, eh, don't. Maybe she could she could keep the ranch open and she herself could live somewhere else. Yeah. You know, so she's not around Get it. Away. She's not dealing with it. She's living her she life. She has an alibi when this all gets uncovered. Yeah, it's you just know. like my husband died. I had a, no idea this yeah. was happening. I don't live there. I don't. Huh? 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 People are crossing the border. <laughs> <laughs> I know. That's what I would have. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Some woman killed my horse. Like, <laughs> that's all I would say. Ah. But, yeah, I, this whole show, it's just there's so much going on right now that I can only imagine where it's going to go. <laughs> uh, because even the way they were saying, if this murder is going to be wrapped up, then what else is going to happen? I mean, I feel like there's, like, six different storylines at this point, and they're all somehow intertwined. And It's like watching Crash. That's crazy. You know, it's like there's all these separate things and you can't see the connection yet, but they keep dropping hints. Yeah. You know, it's like one week, oh, these two are connected and the next week they have nothing to do with each other. Exactly. I don't, I really don't know where this is going to go. So like my predictions are very short term predictions. But before we get into predictions, this was a busy episode, but we're going to jump into some news. After Buzz TV News. So uh, what I mentioned a little earlier uh, was that they don't know where the show is really. I mean, they, they know now, but the, the path wasn't what they originally saw, and it's not what we were expecting. It's not going to wrap up a murder and be done with. So mm-hmm. we're going to have to prepare ourselves to have this murder, you know, kind of solved or know who the killer is and then dive into something else. Uh, so I don't know if it's going to turn into one of those murder mystery-esque shows where there's a bunch of different murderers. Who knows? But we're, we're going to learn as this season progresses because this is season one, so a lot can change by the end of this. Um, but the second thing is I just thought worth mentioning. So this is the uh, the premiere episode. Uh, it premiered on July 10th, obviously, that we watched it. But it averaged over 5 million viewers with live ratings, and now it's increased 67% um, for its co- premiere. So wow. it is, I think they said the, the biggest, the highest, you know, viewed for FX in history. So it's like at the most views for a show on FX. So um, that's pretty cool. That's really cool. Um, especially where it's a summer show. I feel mm-hmm. like summer is, you know, not always that great for TV. But so, yeah, they got 2 million views after they calculated, you know, the on demand and watching yeah. their recorded shows. So, I that's mean, really that's really huge. Yeah, it's pretty huge. It was like an extra 2 million viewers, which is an insane amount. I can't even imagine. But so, that's just a little bit of news. Uh, so the show's doing well. So, I mean, fingers crossed, it seems like it's on the right track for, for season, season two. two. So, I mean, it's early in the game, but who knows? That's a prediction. So why don't we <laughs> jump into predictions now? And now, you're after Buzz TV. Predictions. Do you have any predictions? Um, I'm going to predict that it comes back for season two. <laughs> oh, good prediction. <laughs> That's my prediction. Um, 
What else do I want to predict? Um, I'll predict, I mean, we already kind of said this. I think that Gina um, will help play a role in finding this them, But I kind of feel like maybe Gina will meet Maria at some point since they both have kind of touched. seen and touched yeah, yeah. bases. Maybe together with their information, they'll be able to help. Yeah, like put him together. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah. My prediction that I said I was going to save was um, – Dave and I have always been talking about how there's this guy. He's the cop who found the car, and he's the cop who shows up when they found all the dead immigrants, and he keeps popping up. It's just he's just a regular PD mm-hmm. guy. He's kind of chubby, and he's like nobody important. I forget the his... one who stayed with Maria um, uh, when Sonia had to go. No, no, to no, the no, bar. no. That's uh, her other coworker. He's just like a he's not a detective. He's just like oh, okay. a cop, like El Paso PD or like state police or whatever. Um, I forget his name. I'm blanking on it now because it I always read it on his little badge. Um, but I think he might have something to do with it because he's always popping up at things. I found the car and he was there with the Mm -hmm. immigrants and he's just always around. So I wonder if he's like inside, you know, he's like the guy with the inside scoop. He's the eyes and ears for the killer. Yeah. Or like, I don't necessarily think he's the killer just because of, you know, who he is, but I just, you know, maybe, Mm -hmm. maybe he's a part of it. Maybe it is more than one person. Maybe the beast is a group of people. Mm, I like that. Who knows? But thank you guys for watching. As always, Dave Klein and Catherine are sad they missed it, but it was very fun to have you here. So why don't you give them your Twitter? Okay. Um, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at the Tiana Hobson. Very easy. And I am Paige Selvin. You can find me on Twitter at Paige Sel. Thank you guys for watching. From Bing.com, executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, see you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.